Okay, you guys, this, believe it or not, is 50 pounds of organic rolled oats. It's 90,000 calories and weeks worth of food, and it only costs about 120 bucks. Today, we are making a video for all you preppers out there. We are living in pretty scary times, and we're getting a ton of questions from people about how to prepare for a possible food shortage. We know with this pandemic, there has been grocery shortages and all kinds of scary stuff happening, and of course, warnings of more scary things to come. So Aaron and I have slowly been stockpiling food for some time now, and it's time for us to share that with you guys. This is going to be a plant-based food survival guide. We're gonna go over different food groups, different types of shelf-stable foods, how to use these foods, again, how to make them last, and how to stay fueled and healthy and fed if you can't go to the grocery store, for instance. Or even worse, Amazon Prime isn't delivering in two days. What are we gonna do? Let's figure that out together. Let's get right into it. So Dusty was cracking up at me the other day because I was looking at bug out bags on Amazon, but this isn't like a grab and go situation. We're doing a bug in scenario. So if you're on lockdown, if you're stuck in your home, these are the foods you'll wanna make sure you're stocked up on. So as far as types of shelf stable foods, you can get into canned foods, dried foods, which includes dry whole foods and powder forms, and then there are also frozen foods. As far as nutrient density, nutrient value goes, canned would be our last option, followed by frozen being great, but not quite as effective as simply just having tons of dry goods on hand. So again, like dry beans and grains and your powdered supplements and superfoods. So let's talk about our favorites first. So number one on our list is grains, not just any grains. Our favorite would be oats. These are our go-to because we make oatmeal, waffles, pancakes, all kinds of baked goods, and even simply just dumping them into a smoothie can make it super nutrient rich. And especially for me, being a breastfeeding mama, I wanna keep that supply up in a food shortage, so oats are definitely our go-to as far as versatility. This used to be my idea of bulking up until Dusty recently bought a 50 pound bag and I'm like, okay, is, does a horse come with this or? That's 50 pounds of oats, baby. <laughs> So it's insane and it's very cost effective. So the coolest thing is oats could sit on a shelf for anywhere from 25 to 30 years if they really had to. You can even get like little silica gel packets that kind of come in like your shoes or different packaged goods and they help to keep things a little bit more fresh longer. Our other favorite grains would be rice. We love brown rice. It goes amazing with beans. If you pair them together, it's a complete protein. And I would also say quinoa in this category, even though it's technically a seed, it generally gets lumped in with the grains. So quinoa is a complete protein. Other option would be millet and amaranth. These are all amazing grains that last a super long time. You can sprout them for even more nutrient density. Again, they're gonna last a super long time and keep you fueled with the best protein. So our second category is probably, again, the most important, beans and legumes. So my top two picks, would be chickpeas and lentils. These are heavy hitters when it comes to being protein packed. And in particular, things like red lentils actually have more iron pound for pound than red meat. So, like you guys already know, we've been vegan for a long time. We're getting everything we need from these things right here. And even the non-vegan doctors have recommended chickpeas and lentils as the top protein sources for any diet. So highly, highly recommend. You can make chickpea hummus. You can put these into stews. And again, a little bit goes a long way. Another favorite is obviously black beans. So any of these can be very easily soaked and then prepped in the Instant Pot, which is another absolute must if you are a prepper. Obviously you can boil these down, but it can take hours sometimes. So rinse, sprout, and cook your beans in an instant pot. Also recommend leaving them packaged and sealed in some nice weatherproof or waterproof packaging. In addition to that, I have actually bought some nice plastic totes for added protection against you know moisture, critters, things like that. Keep them sealed up and packaged tight until you're ready to use them and you should be good to go. Like Aaron said, they can last many, many years. Category number three is nuts and seeds and nut and seed butters as well. So here I've got one of our absolute favorites in the taste department, 
hemp seeds. So this is a massive bag. And grains, beans, legumes, while those are all great carb and protein sources, our nuts and seeds are gonna be our healthy fat sources. So our go-tos would probably be chia and flax for omega-3s, but hemp seeds, like I said, they're just so versatile and they taste amazing, so it's probably gonna be the easiest to use. And then we also would recommend getting some nut and seed butters as well. So almond butter, maybe some peanut butter. These are very calorie nutrient dense, especially when you've got kiddos in the household, it's gonna help keep their calories up as well. So while all of these are pretty carb heavy, again, being on a plant-based diet, that's just how we eat, but some overt carbs, things that we actually love like potatoes do stay quite a while in a you know cool, dark place. But if we're talking like months, you may actually want to buy like dried flaked potatoes. You definitely want to still have things like this because potatoes are super mineral rich. Something else that we love and is super good hearty food, especially something that Max really likes, are things like pastas, like spaghettis and elbows and penne pastas, like all of these really good whole grain noodles that we seriously love. So quinoa, brown rice, all of these gluten-free pastas. We're even buying some lentil noodles that are packed full of protein that are just another way to kind of mix up a meal and get fueled up in a pinch. Something else in that same category, again, thinking about Max, things like yummy crackers and cereals. Especially fortified cereals are super good, not just for the kids, but like myself too. I love eating a bowl of cereal at the end of the day. But again, in a real food shortage, if you're in a pinch, again, cereal is gonna last many, many years. They're a good way to switch it up and still get a lot of the vital nutrients that you need. Kind of piggybacking on the cereal idea, plant milk. So the cool thing about being on a plant-based diet is things like soy milk and oat milk don't need to be refrigerated. They're also shelf stable. So again, stocking up. We love organic soy milk. Pound for pound, it's got all the fat and protein that dairy milk does, but of course it's organic soy. It comes from plants. So we seriously love soy milk. Oat milk tastes delicious for smoothies and oatmeals and a bunch of Aaron's really good like muffin recipes. So we highly recommend some plant-based milks. If you're like me and you're probably panicking a little bit thinking about where am I gonna get my beautiful, fresh, colorful fruits and veggies? So this is not sustainable in a food shortage at all. <laughs> so what would I do to get my main source of antioxidants and vitamins and even lots of minerals? I would first opt for frozen, but honestly, the way we blend so many smoothies in this household, the freezer isn't gonna stay packed for long. So aside from frozen fruits and veggies, I would look for canned options, at least for vegetables, like your tomatoes to add to your pasta. You can get tomato sauces and purees or diced, all kinds of different tomatoes. That would be about all I would look for as far as canned or even better jarred options go. Or if you're like our grandparents who know how to can and jar and preserve things, that would be ideal. We personally do not know, so please share in the comments below. Help us learn that amazing technique for food storage. Other ways to get your fruits and veggies would be dried or dehydrated. So we love dates. They're so calorie dense, they're so sweet and chewy. They last a long time, so it's gonna be great for calories as well as lots of minerals and vitamins. We also love dehydrated berries, bananas, things like figs. Dried fruit also has a really high iron content, so that's just an added perk as well. So if you're moving to even further shelf-stable foods, you're gonna wanna look to powdered versions. So these are gonna be like our supplements and our superfoods. So my mom and I were talking on a little road trip the other day about superfoods that we would be sure to stock up on, and our number one pick for both of us was a greens powder. So these are so nutrient dense. I think about missing my fresh kale in my smoothies and green juices and a greens powder is gonna be the best for your vitamins and minerals. It's gonna be super rich in vitamin A, vitamin C, help to detoxify and support your immune system. It's got tons of iron, tons of protein, calcium. Greens are definitely the way to go. Your super is my favorite because not only are they USDA organic, they don't contain any added fillers. So sometimes you wonder what's in there besides just the trace amount of superfoods, but your super is straight superfoods. For example, in the greens one, it has organic wheatgrass, barley grass, baobab, moringa, spirulina, chlorella. So you can see there is nothing fluffy about that. There's no stevia or added flavors. 
just nutrient dense superfood deliciousness. A few of my other favorites would be the Mellow Yellow. So this one is great not only for smoothies, but also for your curries and cooked foods. I love this one because it's great for fighting inflammation. So you might think superfoods are fancy and fluffy, but for somebody who's used to consuming a high raw diet, you're gonna want to continue to support your immune system. So superfoods are the way to go because they're so shelf stable. For example, this one contains turmeric and ginger, ashwagandha. These are gonna be amazing for fighting stress and inflammation in the body. My other two favorites, that are anything but fluffy. These are essential. Forever Beautiful is fantastic for an antioxidant boost. It's got tons of berries in it, as well as maca, which is a phenomenal adaptogen that's great for hormones. And then my other one would be gut feeling. So this is amazing for your gut health. You don't wanna be feeling under the weather when you're locked in your home. So this one has celery, Jerusalem artichoke, and other prebiotics that are going to really help your digestion stay on point. It's gonna be things like this that help to really, really amp up your nutrition when you're lacking in the fresh department. And they also are gonna flavor up a lot of these bland shelf stable foods. So as always, big thank you and shout out to your super for sponsoring this video, helping us to bring continual free content to you guys. If you're interested, you can get a discount with Eat, Move, Rest. We will link it below in the description. Finally, really getting into protein, like straight up protein, something that we have a huge stockpile of and probably will never go without is a good protein powder. We put protein powder in our smoothies, our oats, waffles, like all the good stuff. It makes it taste amazing and again, it gives us all those healthy amino acids and everything that we might be lacking or needing more of if we're super active. So it's a natural progression to go from being a meat eater to a soy boy, like a lot of people say, but the doctors and the scientists have debunked the whole soy boy myth of like man boobs and all of those things. There are two receptors in the body, the alpha and the beta, and the soy just does not bind to the right one. My beautiful wife explained that to me the other day. So we're not to be afraid of soy. That being said, we like to always have tofu in the fridge. Tofu only lasts so long in the fridge, so there's actually something called TVP, textured vegetable protein that is derived from soy, and it's again dried. It's in a bag. You can put it in spaghetti, and it like looks, tastes, feels, even kind of smells like ground beef, especially if you spice it up right. So TVP is another really good option to again have stocked away somewhere dry and safe that is going to give you all that protein, and again spice up a lot of these meals if you're stuck at home. Another great protein source that's also going to be a flavor booster, again, for some of these bland shelf-stable foods, is our friend Nutritional Yeast. So, if it could be a food group, I would make it one. <laughs> It's extremely ridiculously high in not only protein and iron, but also B vitamins. So we even get the non-fortified kind because typically nutritional yeast is fortified with folic acid. So that's a synthetic form of folate which can have adverse health impacts. So we tend to go for the non-fortified. We find this brand on Amazon. Long story short, it's still super high in all of these vitamins and minerals and protein and iron. So you're gonna wanna get an even bigger bag than this. Trust me, I will be on the hunt right after this video. So stock up on this. It's gonna make all of your dishes more flavorful, more nutrient dense, kinda gives everything a cheesy flavor. So great alternative for plant-powered individuals such as hopefully you. And then herbs and spices. So you guys know Dusty and I love our curries and our stews. We're always adding a ton of spices and it takes Makes every single bean and grain dish from bland to bam. So if you want to make any cooked dish amazing, you always start with sauteing onion and garlic, right? But we even buy powdered onion and garlic just to use when we're too lazy or we don't have them on hand because there's a food shortage. Something else you might not think of in a longer term food shortage, you'll want to make sure that you have an adequate supply of vitamins and minerals in the supplement form. So go-tos would be first and foremost a great multivitamin that comes from whole food sources. So you're again not getting those synthetic forms but whole food forms of your vitamins and minerals. And we would also recommend a D3 if you're not in the sun that much, B12, and a good omega-3. Last two super important things. Number one, water. So yes, we have running water in our house right now, but oddly enough, there was a broken line down the street the other day and they had to turn the water off 
kind of without even telling us and I like panicked. I'm like, what are we gonna do? We woke up to no water and that was actually pretty scary, especially given all that we've been going through these last couple of years. So I buy these giant five gallon jugs that you can get almost anywhere, grocery stores, Home Depot, again, my favorite place. And then I actually have a like $10 pump for the top. So fortunately we've never had to use these, but again, if the water for some reason would go out or it would be contaminated, you definitely want to have probably like 20 or 30 gallons worth of water saved up. This could have actually been number one because while you can go many, many days and sometimes weeks without food, you can only survive three days without water. Super important. And finally, we can't forget about our furry friends. So our big boy Bo is gonna be hungry too. So we definitely stock up and usually have at least one extra bag of dog food. We've been feeding him V-Dog, which of course is a vegan dog food for many, many years. And he is an old dog for his breed, but still acts like a puppy. So definitely check that brand out and again be sure and stock up on your pet friendly foods too last but not least let's not forget about sprouting so lots of these seeds grains beans nuts can be soaked and then sprouted so that would be one way to get in your microgreens or your sprouts they're incredibly nutrient dense very bioavailable in the body you could even grow your own garden so you guys remember our indoor tower garden there's all kinds of sprouting systems you can use on your countertop or simply having a garden in your yard would be very ideal that is like the pinnacle I would say is becoming self-sustaining growing your own so if you can kind of get your feet wet in that territory that would be the best for you obviously the majority of the population lives in a climate where it's not possible to grow your own sustainably year-round Dusty and I are hoping to get there eventually all right you guys so if you enjoyed this video if you're ready to become a prepper like us give this video a thumbs up hit that subscribe button and join the eat move rest fam and leave us some love in the comments below let us know if we missed anything crucial or if you want us to make a follow-up video with non-food items to stock up on. On that note, all I can think about is oats right now. Like I said, that would be our top pick. I'm probably going to go bake some of my amazingly delicious lactation muffins or brownies. Be sure to watch last week's video to get that full recipe. Grab our ebook for recipes to use with all of these amazing stockpiled foods. Follow Dusty and I daily on Instagram at Aaron Stanzik, at DB Stanzik, and eat, move, rest, your best. Bye guys. There are three things we all do every day and we could all be doing them better. Eat, move, and rest. We're Dusty, Aaron, Max, Olivia, and Bo, and we're the Stanzics. We aspire to live a plant-centric, faith-forward, healthy lifestyle and welcome all of the adventures that accompany it. Join us every week as we blend, chop, juice, run, lift, ride, and master our minds in between on the ultimate quest to find better balance, deeper connection, and true happiness within.